Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. NFL Divisional Round Playoff Previews and Predictions. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is Winning Cures Everything. If you have not been here before, if you're on YouTube, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. Leave some comments. Share the show out with your friends. If you enjoy it, we would appreciate that. At the end of this show, we're going to have TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast jump on with us to talk uh, what underdogs he likes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he's, uh, he's also the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter. We, we talk about a few things as well. So, uh, before we do any of that, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six wonderful sports books. You can find more information on them along with all of the good steakhouses that they got, all of the casinos, all of the go- I mean, golf courses. I'm talking like concerts, everything. You got some amazing stuff down at Tunica, Mississippi. You can find it over at tunicatravel.com. Go get information about it. Do yourself a favor. Go down and visit. It's fun. We promise. We go down all the time. We love that. So, the divisional round of the playoffs, we're going to talk Vikings 49ers, Titans Ravens, Texans Chiefs, Seahawks Packers. Uh, that is in order, Saturday through Sunday. Uh, you can find all of our picks, previews, etc. over at winningcureseverything.com. Go over and check that out. You can subscribe to the podcast there. You can subscribe to the YouTube there, etc. If you're on the podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And make sure you uh, leave a nice review. We would appreciate it. Let's go on and fire in. You ready to fire in? Yep. Let's do this. Saturday, 335 on NBC. That's 335 Central, God's time zone. The Vikings at the 49ers. Now, Pacific time, this is an early game. Now, I'm kind of surprised that they did It's a noon game. Yeah, on a Saturday. Okay. Well, like all the Pac-12 plays. Yeah, but I, I just I found it weird. Like the 49ers obviously get a bit of an advantage here because first off, the Vikings played on Sunday in New Orleans, and now they have to play Saturday afternoon in San Francisco. I mean, they just got to fly all over creation here. Um, Covering a lot of real estate, racking yeah. up some airline miles. You got that right. 49ers are a seven-point favorite. Uh, let me let me read off my notes here. Uh, unlike the Saints, the 49ers do not have PTSD of getting beat on the last play in the playoffs for umpteen something straight years. Uh, the Vikings need Cousins to make championship throws again, otherwise they will not win this game because they they got to be able to throw to get those guys like back out of the line of scrimmage because they, I think the 49ers are going to do anything they can to stop Dalvin Cook. Um, And then I've got D. Ford returns. Nick Bosa can blow up the line. Can the Vikings cover Kittle? Now, is there anything that I've missed in this game? (laughs) No. No. I mean, Minnesota's hot right now. Yeah. They're really hot. They're really hot because of one week. The 49ers have been... Well, yeah, they're hot right now. Yeah. The 49ers have have been defensively one of the best teams all year. Haven't been, like... Lately, like at the end of the season, it didn't feel like, like it felt like they were vulnerable. And if if Cousins is throwing the ball against them the way that he was against the Saints, then the Vikings are going to be a hard out. Problem is, is he had time against the Saints. He's not going to have time against the 49ers. I agree with you 100%. I mean, that's the issue is, is the Saints couldn't get pressure. Yeah. And, and so I he was able to hit will. deep passes that aren't they're just not going to be there because you can't you can't wait in the pocket that long. No. Not against this team you can't. No, you're right. Now that doesn't mean they can't move the ball on them. It doesn't mean they can't score. That doesn't mean they can't win the game. It just means that you're not going to sit back there all day and wait for Thielen to get open 40 yards down the field. Now, I think that obviously Thielen can run shorter routes. Like he's a yes. good route runner. No, he's no. a great no, catcher did, of the what, football. Like I said, what killed the Saints was they could not cover the deep ball. Yeah. On multiple occasions when the Vikings needed a big play, they took the top off of the defense. 
and, and Cousins, partly because Cousins could sit back there. And Cousins was able to make the throws that he hasn't normally made in the past. Why didn't he make them in the past? Because he had pressure, and he doesn't do well with pressure. Guess what? That's not a knock on him. No quarterback does well with pressure. Yeah. None of them like it. Except for Joe Burrow. <laughs> this year, anyway. Um, but, yeah, so, I like, to win this game, I fully believe Cousins is going to have to hit some passes. Yes. Down the field. He's going to have to somehow... I think they're also going to... If I was them, I would try to get the screen game going. You've got to find a way to slow down the pass rush. Yeah. You just... You just have to because this pass rush is nasty. And the problem is is you don't necessarily have to always stop Bosa or the edge guys or whatever because the 49ers front, I mean, they'll get you from the middle. They'll come at you from the A-gap yeah. with nose tackles. Yeah, they, they – I mean, their, they their front seven is scary. And that's, that's the only part of this game that I think is such a big advantage for one team. That leads me down the road of, I think I like, I think I like the 49ers. All right, so so official pick, I've got the 49ers minus seven here. I, yeah, Are you doing the same? thing? I do too. I do too. I, I don't like the points, I, but I cannot a trust Cousins two weeks in a row, and even if I do trust him, I've seen teams play great games against the 49ers this year and still get beat, still come yeah. up short. No, you're you're right. You're right, uh, and it's a touchdown. I I think they are going to be. Uh, just I, I already have the mouth. It, a little bit of this is game. is confirmation bias on my part. I I already have a a a Super Bowl bet on uh two teams making the Super Bowl together. So on two teams making the well, yeah, an AFC team and an NFC team making the Super Bowl. A, a parlay bet on the championship winners. Ravens 49ers? No. No? uh, Am I supposed to guess here? Well, no, because we're going to get to that game, and you'll find out when we cover the rest of them. Okay. Okay. But I'm going to guess 49ers. Well, yes. The 49ers. I just said that. The 49ers ers are my NFC NFC representative. representative. So I don't know if they'll cover every game, but I have them winning the next two. Okay. All right, and being the NFC representative in the Super Bowl. All right, let's move on to the next one. The Titans at the Ravens. Ravens minus nine and a half. The total is 47. Seemed a little high to me. Uh, Saturday, 7.15 p.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone on CBS. Number one and number three in total rushing yards in the entire NFL. Uh, the Ravens are plus 97 in the first quarter on the season, which is absurd. Uh, the Titans need to be Pretty able good. to avoid that onslaught early, yeah. and they might be able to make a game of it. Uh, the Ravens need to just stick to the script, what yeah. they've been doing. They, they don't need to change anything for this game. The Titans, however, uh, Tannehill, it, throughout the season, he has the number eight QBR of any quarterback in the league. That's pretty insane. Yep. Uh, and if you just go by starters, uh, it, it's like he's number one in a lot of these metrics. It's insane to me. Not worried about Tannehill's QBR. He was awful last week. Not worried about Tannehill's QBR. They need they need Tannehill to step up in this game. He's got to be able to make some throws. Okay. Uh, because I think the Ravens can slow down Derrick Henry. Okay. I don't. When you have the Hulk, you just get him pissed off and you give him the ball and you just let him go smash people. And are the Titans your your? No. no, okay, they're not my AFC pick <laughs> to make the Super Bowl. Absolutely not. <laughs> the way Absolutely. that you were looking at me, I was no, like, what? I don't, and I don't even think the Titans are going to win this game. Actually, that's yeah, I, no, but I, I like them to cover the ten. I've and got I the same thing. And I think I think a lot of it is you you slow the game down, you run the football, and. Now the nice thing is, is they don't have Gilmore on the other side over there, Baltimore. True. So Brown might actually get a pass thrown to him. It'd be nice because but he I, no, he it, caught he Marlon had Humphrey one is still he he, he had he had one target, zero catches against Gilmore, um, which is nuts, by the way, because Gilmore the week before 
got absolutely lit up by uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Like, I, I don't. Think what he is was that about? In it, I don't think he cared. I think. I think they were. I don't know. I can't explain some of these things. I'm telling you, when he wants to shut somebody down, he just shuts them down. Yeah. Here's the thing. They practiced in the offseason together, and those two guys got to fighting in the offseason. They chirped back and forth all before that game started. Gilmore was not giving up anything. Okay. I I don't care care if he gave up 100 touchdowns the last three weeks. It doesn't matter. He wasn't giving up anything, and he didn't. But they didn't have to. It's a good point. I'm going to tell you this. I I think the Ravens are going to struggle to slow Henry down. I think it's because it's – and as much as as I'm 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 fondling all over Henry, this the offensive blocking scheme is really good. Oh yeah, they're like, run like blocking a, for sure. A, a fat guy that that grew up watching offensive linemen do their job in the NFL, it gets a little boring because there aren't a lot of great offensive line, and there's damn sure not there's rarely five good offensive linemen that play as a team, and so it doesn't always make it fun to watch how they block how these guys open holes and the scheme design for it is unbelievable. Yeah. I, agree. I mean, that's a really good Patriots front seven. And now it's not elite, but it's really good. And they just moved it like, yes, Henry is hard to tackle, but he was three or four yards across the line of scrimmage before somebody got a hand on him. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it, it's a tough angle at at any angle to be able to get Henry down. Somebody that big and fast. But but they they move him in between the tackles a lot and then he busts it outside. Yes. And it's it's really like it's fun to watch. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. No, to they've watch. got they've got some offensive linemen that are big, athletic and fast. And and that's hard to compete with if you're gonna turn them loose. Yeah. So few NFL teams actually turn them loose. You got that right. So I, I I I like what they're doing offensively. I think they hold the ball. I don't know that they score a lot, but I think they hold the ball. I think they keep it out of Lamar's hands. I don't know that anybody stops Lamar. Do you think does it change anything without uh, without Ingerman? Nope. Because I don't think that we have resolution on whether or not he's playing yet. But it doesn't matter. That run game opens up because you've got three people watching Lamar. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, you've got a guy in the middle, and you've got you don't have a guy spying him. You've got a guy. You've got three linebackers watching him, two on the edge to not let him outside. That never can seem to stop him from getting outside, and one in the middle. And none of them, nobody's ever good at that. It makes makes sense. But it leaves it leaves you vulnerable to mistakes in the middle of the field. Yeah, yeah. That's um, I don't know that the Titans really have anybody that can take away that middle of the field. I don't either. I don't um, either. I, that's why I think the Ravens can win this game, or will win this game, and uh, and and I think they're going to win it. But I don't. I don't know that they blow them out. In, in order for the Titans' running game to be successful, uh, they are going to have to avoid that onslaught in the first quarter. Yeah, well, and, and how you how you avoid it is you have to hold the ball for seven minutes in the first quarter. Yeah, and in the second quarter, you got to hold the ball for seven minutes. Like if yeah. you don't take fifty percent of the time off of you just have to take the air out of the ball because Lamar is explosive and he is dangerous and he will hold on to the football too oh yeah yeah this game could be the shortest game in like of the playoff history of the year (laughs) and yeah 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 enough play I don't know about that they they used to run the ball in the like the 30s way way too way too many commercials go this go around now So uh, let's move on. Next game, we're moving to Sunday. You, you both, you have the Ravens winning though, right? Yeah, I've got the Ravens winning. I got okay. the Titans covering. Titans covering. Yeah, so yeah. I do too. I think I think this will be a tighter game than you know than a lot of people think. I kind of only think it's going to be tight because of the style of football. That's, if if I agree. the Titans try to get back and let a rip, they're either going to have a hell of a shot to win the game, or they're going to get housed. Yeah, and it won't be close. I don't think that. I mean, you. I would not go that game plan, but. Also, I mean, not an it, offensive guy. Yeah, I, I don't know. Arthur Smith has been really—he's done well. He's—he's he's been impressive this year. Done really well. So, let's uh, let's move on. Sunday, Texans at the Chiefs. Chiefs nine and a half point favorite. Total is fifty-one in this game. It's Sunday, two o five p.m. Central Time on CBS. Uh, here are my notes on it. Chiefs gave up five point zero yards per run to quarterbacks this year. That is twenty fifth in the league. Not very good. Deshaun Watson could have a field day against this defense. 
Uh, however, the Texans' defense allows the sixth highest QBR in the NFL, and they give up the fourth highest total passing touchdowns in the NFL. Uh, the biggest question for me is, can the Honey Badger take away the middle of the field from Watson? Absolutely, he can. I think he can, too. I he's think been, this is going to be a middle game. He's been the best the safety time. all year long. Yeah, That defense has stepped up massively. They brought in a couple of additions. Um, and, and, uh, Tyron Matthews is nothing short of what that team needed. Yes, I agree. I mean, he, he gives that defense the juice they need. That, that chief's defense has really stepped up here lately. Um, now obviously there are still vulnerabilities, but the vulnerabilities don't seem to hurt you as badly when you have Patrick Mahomes at quarterback. Like it, he, I think against this defense, he is going to be able to light up the Texans in this ball game. Completely, agree. Uh, they're they're secondary. The Bills moved the ball great. on them pretty easily. Yeah, they really and that's did. that's with a complete moron, like a guy that's this far removed from maybe being a Neanderthal. <laughs> yeah, no, you you're probably right. You're probably right. I mean he he's got an arm and he's got some moves, but damn, he's dumb. Yeah, and. And Pat Mahomes is anything but that. Oh hell no! So they the weapons the, that they've got, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, the fifty-one seems like it could be low here. Uh, I think really this could low. be high scoring. Yeah. So this this is my AFC team. I, it it makes sense. I've got the Chiefs minus nine and a half. That's my official pick yep. on this. And I think the Chiefs win. I think they blow them out. I I think they do too. Like uh, Texans went in and and housed them. Uh, Week six. That's right. A long time ago. But Mahomes still dealing with an injury. Yep. You know, it was it was a weird, uh, unexpected game. That's right. Uh, and I think the Chiefs are are lighting it up right now. I I completely agree. Anything else we need to hit on that one? I it's uh, kind of short. I think we're good. Yeah, I mean, I I like the Texans. I don't. I, what they did last week was great. But it, that did, second did it half seem, comeback did but. it seem a little flukish in that second? Well, half? No, it's not flukish. I mean, both of those coaches made just some of the dumbest yeah, coaching moves decisions. I've ever seen in my life in one game, and somebody just has to win the damn thing. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I, I don't, don't trust Bill O'Brien in this spot for any. I don't trust no, Bill O'Brien ever, ever, ever. We didn't win all year. Now, now we lost a lot of money bet against him, but I still think we were on the right side of all those bets. Yeah, I mean, it, it, Deshaun but, Watson is un. Believable. You know how I know that? It's because he's carrying that dead ass to the second round of the playoffs, <laughs> to the second year winning the division. Yeah. Like, like Bill O'Brien is keeping his job because they drafted Watson. And that don't get me wrong, that's part of the job. That is part of the job. Part of the thing. But you're right. Whew, man. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. All right. Let's move on. We're doing Sunday afternoon. The Seahawks at the Packers. Packers a four-point favorite. 46.5 is the total. It's Sunday, 5.40 p.m. God's time zone on Fox in Lambeau Field. It's going to be cold. It's going to be snowy. This is the hardest game I had all out of all of them. It's, oh, this wasn't hard for me. Okay. This wasn't hard for me. Okay. And, and the only reason I say that. We're going the same on the other three. You do not went O for last week. Yeah. So I guess we're going. We're going to do the exact same as last time. I don't look back, baby. I look forward. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna. <laughs> we're, gonna we're, we're, we're gonna go head to head here. That's it. May, probably so. That's it. look here. Here are my notes. Wilson versus uh, Wilson versus Rogers. Two Super Bowl winners. Seahawks need to protect Wilson against defensive ends uh, Zadarius Smith. And Preston Smith, Smith yeah. Rodgers was number 18 in QBR this year per pro football reference, needs to step up in a big way. Aaron Jones could be key factor of the game. And that's what I got. Rodgers better steer clear of Clowney. Because Clowney looks like he is pissed off that he got traded and was doubted in Houston, and he is playing like he's pissed off. It, yeah, he's playing like something right now. <laughs> oh, what does that mean? <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm just saying, if if he knocks Aaron Rodgers out of this game, obviously all bets are off. I mean, no, but, no, no, all bets are live. But, no, that ticket is in live. your hand and thrown away. Yeah, I know. That's, I'm taking the Packers minus four here. I don't love it. 
I, it wasn't hard for me to take the Packers I, here. I think but, the Seahawks are going to play a field goal game, and that's it. I don't know that the Seahawks can win this game. But I will tell you this. All day long, all day long, I thought about this this one game. And I just kept saying, the Packers are the right play. The Packers are the right play. And then we got up here and started getting ready. And I just said, I'm not, I'm just not, I'm not picking Aaron Rodgers over Russell Wilson. I'm just not going to do it. I've lost money on Dumber. But I'm going to go with well, my guy over a guy I don't like and I don't believe in. Okay. okay. Now, they don't have a secondary to really to really take out any of Rodgers' weapons when he gets to scrambling and guys are going to be able he's going to make big plays. But I also don't know that I don't know that 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 Green Bay has a secondary either. And neither one of these teams are worried about playing in the cold. No, they The they snow and the cold ain't going to bother either one of them. They don't have much of a secondary. I will say this, Russell Wilson is like number 1 in the NFL. Uh, with the most pressures against him, it's well, like yeah, it, because he, he always pressure. has pressure. Yeah, because you know they can't run per, right now. That you can't run the damn ball. Yeah, faces pressure thirty seven percent of the time. That is insane. Like it is almost impossible to be successful at anything on offense when you are facing pressure thirty seven percent of the time. He's so good. He's and, so good. And this Packers defense has been lights out all season. They have not won because of Aaron Rodgers. I know that. No, no. The, the, the defense scares me a little bit, but. And it was all, not that long ago that Aaron Rodgers was playing lights out in the playoffs. Like fine, he, not that long ago. Like, it, it wasn't It wasn't that long. It was. You know, the Super Bowl he won, my first daughter was born the day yeah, after I, that. And that I was got that. He nine years ago this February, boy. I understand that. I'm saying when he but went he's to elite. And made he's elite. He's had a he, decade. A decade hadn't done crap in the playoffs. Was it was it the uh, the Falcons that knocked him out of the playoffs a couple of years ago? I don't know. Everybody's knocked him out of the playoffs the last couple of years. They haven't made it past the second round in a long time. No, they were in the NFC Championship game. I think it was against the Falcons. Was it the year the Falcons and the Pats played? Yeah, I think that. But how? What was that? Three years ago? Know. Two years ago? I don't know. It was three years ago. Last year was Rams, Pats. The year before that was Eagles, Pats. The year before that was Fal- uh, Falcons. So, yeah. Sure. But, it, but they all run together. They they definitely do. Is it Pats, 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 Pats. Not Pats this year, though. Um, that, was, that was not nice. That's, oh, I wasn't trying to be mean. That was it's a, I'm just saying. Packers are in here. Packers, I think, get this done because of defense. That's the only reason. I just they, I, they cannot. The Seahawks cannot run the football. If this line was three, I'd be messed up. I really would. I'd, I'd I'd have a really hard time figuring it out. The fact that I just think this is gonna be a field goal game either way. Both these teams play some weird ass games all year. Seattle yeah. has played more non conventional games than I've ever seen. It which tells me anything you think you know about how this game's gonna go, you ain't got a clue how this game's gonna. Nobody does. I think that's been the NFL pretty much all season. No, I don't. Right? Some teams have been pretty predictable. Seahawks, damn sure ain't one of them. No, you're right about that. But, I mean, look at who we got in the in our, our Elite Eight here. 49ers, Vikings. Nobody in the world had the 49ers. Nope. Uh, and nobody expected nobody, the Vikings. Nobody had the Titans. Well, th- no, everybody I'm had the Nobody Vikings. expected the Vikings to be, like, going on the, the wild road, card. Like, that's yeah. right, traveling all those other places. Uh, Titans at the Ravens. like I, it, Nobody had the Titans, and probably it, nobody had the Ravens either. Week five of the season, the Titans were one and four. Yep. Like, it, give me give me a break here. Talking about fire. Talking about fire and frable. Yeah. Uh, Texans, Chiefs. Uh, nobody had the – oh, everybody had the Chiefs, and everybody probably had the Texans too. Probably so. Um, and then Seahawks, Packers was just, you know. Everybody had that also. I, we I don't were the know how many I, people had the Packers. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't a lot of people a lot. had them winning that division. I don't know, man. That, Everybody it, bets Aaron Rodgers. They just believe in. They just believe in Aaron. And and he isn't what won them games this year. No, he is definitely not that. All right, so I got the Packers minus four. You got the Seahawks plus four. I'm going to take the four points, and I'm going to hope for the best. I can. Uh, I can understand. Surely, surely one of us goes 500 this week, right? <laughs> you would like to think so, right? <laughs> we'll see. It's been one of them years. We, if nothing else, we've had a whole lot of fun doing it. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. And if people have been fading us this year. Yeah, we. I mean, uh, hadn't done terrible. If you faded me, you've lost money. Yeah, if they faded you, they lost money. If they terrible. faded me. Now, last week you faded me. You, 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 you swept. Parlay them all. I told you, you what I'm doing, and if you bet against me, 
You've been doing pretty well. You're welcome. So, uh, with that said, let's go ahead and jump into our buddy from the Three Dog Thursday podcast, Mr. TJ Reeves. He is TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. He's also the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter. TJ, at Buck Sideline Guy on Twitter. How are things going, my brother? Happy New Year, boys, and we're getting down to the nitty-gritty now, NFL playoffs, and we're going to have that college football playoff championship game here coming on Monday night, depending on when they're hearing us in uh, the Mercedes-Benz Superdome to end the college season. So uh, happy postseason there, uh, Winning Cures Everything fans and Three Dog Thursday fans. It's getting good. It is, uh, it's not too shabby. Overall, against the spread records uh, in, in the bowl games, Chris and I both hit well over 52%. Uh, so we, we feel pretty good. We both made money. Everything was good. Uh, and now we've just got the national championship game, and we've got the uh, NFL playoffs to go. So NFL Love playoffs, that. Love game. that. And by the way, for the bowl games on Three Dog Thursday there, for the first couple of weeks of the bowl games on Three Dog Thursday, we had six of them that we gave you, six correct underdogs, including Gary Seegers pulling off a couple of them early with uh, with Florida Atlantic, uh, and I believe also Kent State. You were in great shape yes. with both of those. So yes, we made some good bowl game contributions on Three Dog Thursday, too. Now we we got to be better in the NFL, though. I know you want to talk NFL first, because last week, Brother Giannini was on. I thought you were in great shape, and so did the Bills, obviously, think they were in great shape. Chris, you know this, and you guys have been talking about this already. When they were up 16 uh, nothing, it's just a matter, especially with their defense, of put that game away. It's amazing they were not able to put it away. But I, I thought you were golden there with that one and, and had the Bills. And then a Houdini, Deshaun Watson, and the, and the Texans go and take it from them. Yeah, Deshaun Watson had a pretty magical game towards the end, of the sec- I guess the entire second half. And uh, I shouldn't put money on Josh Allen. Well, it's interesting from our show that we had Sal Capaccio from the Bills radio broadcast on Three Dog Thursday on right after you, and I put the question right to him that can Josh Allen put this game on his shoulders and go win it, and he basically said no and uh, and said he's a second-year quarterback, but he's just not in that position and not with the weapons, and my Lord, the meltdown there at the end of, of uh, regulation and also in the in the overtime of not being able to get it done. Ouch, babe, for the uh, for the Bills fans, that's for sure. Now, you got that right. I mean, that was just, that was painful to watch. Very painful to watch. So I got, but they're, I got used to, they're used to painful to watch, having lost all those Super Bowls in the 90s. True. If you're one, how, how wild is it, though, that Stephen Hauschka lined up for a 47-yard field goal to force overtime? The exact yardage of the Norwood miss in Tampa, by the way, the Super Bowl with the Giants was a 47-yard field goal that Norwood missed wide to the right. They lose the Super Bowl. Hauschka makes the field goal, and the and the Bills still get their heart broken in overtime. Anyway, there it's tough are. to be a Bills fan. So I, I found this interesting. Um, I was listening to, golly, Jason Lockenfor, I think, talking uh, on another podcast today, and he brought up, the fact that remember when Antonio Brown tried to get traded, the Steelers tried to originally trade him to the Bills, and he squashed it. And to think, man, if he had taken that and not gone crazy and could have gotten there, would he have been the deciding factor that could have put that team over the edge? That's a great point. You often talk about what might have been, and they were clearly trying to trade him to Buffalo. And – didn't work out, and he's all the way out of the NFL. And so, yeah, what, what I mean, and the same argument can obviously be made if he had just kept his head together in, in New England with that situation. Or, or uh, with Oakland. Or with Oakland. They, yeah, they talked right. about all three teams that either had him or tried to get sure. him. Sure. Either barely, barely missed the playoffs or made the playoffs and offensively just needed a little bit of help to, uh, to, to make any noise. And – he could have been the difference maker for a team, yeah, you and, he, and he chose to be a knucklehead instead. All right, so TJ, let's uh, let's go on and move into this weekend. Uh, wh- which games do you like? There's uh, there's obviously four games this weekend. We've got the national championship game that we're going to talk about on the other side, but but let's talk about uh, which which underdog. I mean, there's there's some big dogs this weekend, really big. There dogs. are, and and the one thing that we already know, there's going to be at least one upset here, and there may be a couple of them because every year in the divisional round, 
there is a team sitting and waiting on a bye who's going to play flat, uh, who's going to play a team that played really well last weekend or has even been playing really well at the end of the season and last weekend and is going to catch them. I mean, time and again, it, it, there have been some years when there have been three upsets on the divisional weekend of the teams with the buys. So uh, let's let's just see where they are. And I, I, I like the two on Saturday the best. I mean, starting with that Minnesota game at San Francisco, San Francisco played so many wild games at the end of the year. They won one in New Orleans in the final seconds that was crazy. They lost one to Atlanta in the final seconds. And then on the goal line in Seattle, they come up victorious with the stop on the tight end Hollister on the goal line. That gave them the division win, gave them the bye in the home game. But Minnesota played very well in the Superdome. Surprised me. I really thought, Chris, we talked about this on Three Dog Thursday last week. I thought that was wrong place, wrong time for the Vikings. I thought the Saints were going to hammer them by 10 or more points. There were a lot of people who believed that, and we were all wrong. Credit to Kirk Cousins. Credit to Mike Zimmer with the defense that got pressure on Drew Brees with the front four. Dalvin Cook running the ball. Those things travel. I mean, running the ball and playing defense travels, and I think Minnesota can hang in if not win this game. What is that line? Seven, seven and a half, seven, something seven like right that? Now. Yeah, pretty pretty much seven across the board. I like the Vikings, boys, to hang in in this one if not win the game in San Francisco. Garoppolo's never won a playoff game. You know, not that Kirk Cousins is now some great playoff veteran because he won because he won one. But I, I just I just think this is a spot where Minnesota can hang in as the road dog. At Zimmer, he won me over last week with the uh, the pregame speech or the pregame interview where he said, you know, everybody counted me out. Everybody's saying we don't have a chance. We're not going to win this thing. Uh, they all counted. I didn't get my first job till I was fifty eight. You know, I didn't get my first head coaching job. Uh, it, well, and what and what a great personality oh, he yeah. is, Gary. Because I mean, this is a man that's been through a lot personally. His wife died of cancer. The man has had multiple eye surgeries and has basically been told you're going to lose the vision eventually in that eye. It's decreasing and decreasing. And you don't think he wants this? Of course, they all want it. But you don't think he wants this right now when he was maybe on the hot seat? So I think it's a great point that you bring up. This is a guy that has been through all kinds of personal adversity. Cousins being ridiculed, uh, and and the Vikings came together. And again, don't I know uh, you you preach this all year. You guys have about San Francisco's defense, but they've been more vulnerable down the stretch of the season. And I think Dalvin Cook can run it some against them. I don't know how you guys feel about that and what you've said earlier in the show because I couldn't hear you. But I think that's going to be a big factor. I, I think you're probably right about that. I think you're probably right. Now you said that you liked the other game on Saturday as well, uh, the yeah, Titans, Tennessee. Yeah. Titans Tennessee Titans. Uh, what is that? What is that line right now for the Titans? Uh, nine and a half, nine. It, it just depends on the book. But it's it's pretty much nine and a half across the board. And they played well at New England. Sorry, Chris. And they played well down the stretch of the season. I know Houston pulled all the starters. It wasn't a winner-take-all type game for Houston in the regular season finale. Tennessee had to win. Houston already knew they were at home, and they couldn't change their playoff position to a bye. So you kind of discard that one a little bit, but they they have, again, run the ball, and they have played solid defense. I don't think they will win this game. I think Lamar Jackson, I think the veteran uh, coach that Harbaugh is, the fact that a year ago, remember, they were so bad offensively in that uh, playoff game with the Chargers on the opening weekend. I think they've learned from that. Lamar Jackson has learned from that. So I don't know that Tennessee wins, but that line to me, I'm looking strongly at that on Three Dog Thursday. That is a large line for a Tennessee team that has covered six of their last eight games at the end of the regular season last week. Uh, Titans seem to play close games. I think they can keep it close there in Baltimore. We're debating that one on Three Dog Thursday, boys. Yeah, it's the uh, the number one and number three total rushing yards teams in the in the NFL. They're definitely going to be running the football. Yeah, so I I think the the less points, the better, uh, because. I don't think this is going to be a long football game. <laughs> no. I think well, and how really how hurt, and we don't know, how hurt is Mark Ingram? Uh, and generally those injuries, I'm obviously no doctor. I just play one on Winning Cures Everything and Three Dog Thursday. Knowing what I know about <laughs> calf injuries, that's normally at least a three- to four-week rehab recovery, depending on what he did. So we're kind of at the fringe of that with him hurting it 
in week 16, didn't play week 17, took a week off. If Ingram is not fully healthy, guys, that's a huge factor on the Ravens being able to run the ball. So, obviously. So, stay tuned on how that affects them and their ability. Uh, yes, Lamar can throw it, but it's, e- it's easier for them with the read option and what they want to do if they're using Mark Ingram between the tackles. Agreed. Now, let's go ahead, before we wrap up, let's move to Monday night in the Superdome in New Orleans. LSU is a six-point favorite over Clemson right now. Does that line seem kind of high to you? It is. But again, LSU high-powered, and I know I can't see him, but Giannini's grinning here because uh, <laughs> L- I mean LSU has put it on everybody they've played, basically, with that pass offense. The one thing that I'm going to focus on on Three Dog Thursday, the key is Brent Venables and the scheme, and what has he come up with here since uh, they've had extra time to prepare in between the end of the ACC season, the, the championship game, and the semifinal game, and then more time to prepare here for an extra week or so for this title game with different blitzes, with different uh, scheming stuff. I mean, they've had some time to do that and some extra practice time. That's the real variable. Do I believe they're going to shut LSU down? Absolutely not. Can they slow them down enough to stay in the game where LSU doesn't get to 31, 35, 38 points? I say yes. I think this, this may be a a very well be a high scoring close game in the high twenties, the low thirties that Clemson can possibly win guys. Chris rebuttal. There's just no, nobody in the world's keeping LSU in the (laughs) twenties. That's just, it's just not mathematically going to happen. Yeah. What about if Burrow throws it to him a couple of times? What about if they get a sack fumble here? Which we, I mean, we saw them eat Alabama's lunch last year in this championship game where Venables and that defense came with blitzes from all kinds of different directions. You don't even make room for that being possible here, Brother Giannini? Nope. This team is so much better than that Alabama team last year, it's not even close. Offensively, right, this will... team is far better. I'll tell you this: Nick Sa- Nicholas Saban had two weeks to prepare for this team, and they put up a fifty burger on him. Okay, Kirby Smart, pretty good offensive, co- defensive guy, had you know he only had a normal week to get ready for him, but they 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 hung anything they wanted on him too. So I'm just saying, Brett is the a great great defensive guy. We talked about it. We covered it on our breakdown. He's not magic though. And it, it would take a magician. It would take voodoo to stop him. <laughs> and you're thinking the voodoo is on the side of the – I will say this. I've been privileged to be at a lot of huge games. I was at the BCS title game win by LSU in the Superdome over Ohio State. That was the year in 2007 when it was such a crazy season. And everybody lost two games that year. So we had a two-loss LSU, a two-loss Ohio State in the championship game of that season – and LSU put it on them, and it was raucous like you can't believe. And this is this is obviously going to be a very tough, if not impossible, ticket uh, to grab in the Superdome by the time we get to the weekend and Monday night with LSU just uh, rolling in. Like like half half the alumni and the fans may be there in the French Quarter, even if they can't get in the Superdome for a chance at a coronation, an unbeaten season, and another national title. So it's going to be some scene Monday. All I'm saying is Clemson's got a lot of things in their favor with experienced coaching staff, Trevor Lawrence on offense. Can the defense create some things and make it a good game? I think they can. We'll talk about it more on the show on Three Dog Thursday. Absolutely. And you can find him on Three Dog Thursday anywhere you get your podcast. You can find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, we always appreciate you hopping in with us. We will uh, we will talk to you again next week. Plenty, plenty to discuss on Three Dog Thursday. Happy divisional round of the playoffs. Uh, Giannini is pumped, as is the country now, to get this LSU-Clemson game rolling. I hope we get a good game there Monday night. You boys be well. It's always great to be with you on Winning Cures Everything. All right, we appreciate TJ hopping in. Always a good time. Always a good listen. The Three Dog Thursday podcast. He also does a college basketball podcast. It's uh, College Basketball Coast to Coast. You can go look that thing up. Um, TJ. Wonderful stuff, as always. You can go find us at winningcureseverything.com. You can find more about Tunica, Mississippi over at tunicatravel.com. Anything else you want to hit on? No? We're going to talk uh, later on in the week about some NFL coaching changes. Mike McCarthy being with the Cowboys now. 
uh, all sorts of different stuff. Joe Judge, the uh, the new coach of we'll the cover Giants. It all. We'll cover it all yeah. Thursday. We'll hit it all. It'll come out on Friday the, show. Yeah, on the Friday show. Uh, with that said, we'll see you all again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.